Welcome. Before we get started, I wanted to let you all know the Wild Jam for Godot is currently running till the end of this week, and it runs every month and has been for about two and a half years, and it will be my first game jam in Godot after coming over from Unity. I'm having a lot of fun, and I highly recommend anyone who's interested to give it a check out. There'll be a link in the description. On to the video. Basically, what the plan is, is we're going to go over creating and deleting objects. And this is really simple in Godot 4, though it's a lot more complicated in Godot 3. But before we do any of that, let's go ahead and make sure that our new scene, the current main scene. Right here, you just go to this and you select whatever the current scene that we want is. And that makes everything easier, make sure everything works. Yes, we can still move around and jump. Okay. Real quick, before we go into code, what we're going to need is we're going to need the object responding. So I'm going to go over here to box scene where we've got the original box that the player's made out of, and we're just going to make a new inherited scene. And right here we have that, and I'm just going to go over to cube, and let's differentiate it a little bit from the player. We're going to hit make unique recursive. We changed independently from the player, and let's just make it a green color. We'll go ahead and save that, and we're going to save this in the prefab scene, and we can call it whatever we want. We're just going to call it spawned node. Yeah. So if you go over here and we sp drop one in, you can see it's a green object. And let's create as a child of character body 3D, the node object. And it's just going to be a base node. And we're going to rename this spawner. And we're also going to create a node 3D and we're going to rename this one spawn location. And since we want it to be in front of the player, let's just move the spawn location out in front of the player. We could put these into one, but it's going to be helpful to understand how to link up objects together later on. So let's go ahead and just put it as two separate objects. And under C sharp, let's go ahead and make our script. So we're going to call this one uh, spawner and we're going to make it a C sharp script and we're going to be inherited based off of node. And then we'll go ahead and create another node right here. And we're going to call this one also spawner, but we're going to make this one Godot script. Real quick, we're going to go to project settings, we're going to go to input map. Let's go ahead and add in those input actions. So we're going to need two input actions, mouse left click, mouse right click. And these are going to be used for, and we'll just left click, going to be used for the spawning and deletion of objects. So let's go ahead and close that. All right. So first we're going to implement the function input on the Godot script. I did not mean to do this and probably should have started with the variables. And so I go back to that. And the first variable is going to be a node 3D spawn location. And it's going to be our reference to the location as a child of the player as to where you spawn, in this case, directly in front of the player. That's the thing we set up in the scene. Next is a pack scene. And the pack scene variable is interesting. It allows you to pull a resource from the project and lets you instantiate that resource. And instantiation is a big word for essentially creating an object. And there's a lot more to it than that, but this is the simplest way to explain it. So inside the input function, we're going to go ahead and call in that input dot uh, is action pressed for the mouse left click um, input map that I made before. And within that, we're going to go ahead and instantiate the object. And you'll notice we instantiate this object and then immediately cast it to a variable. So we create a node 3D variable, and this will be called um, let's call it spawned node. And we're going to type in the packed node variable name, so node to spawn dot instantiate. And then we're going to cast immediately after to node 3D using the keyword as. So it's as node 3D. Now, instantiating an object, it does exist, but it's not anywhere in the scene. So to make it be in the scene, we first have to get the root and we use get tree function to then dot root, which is a variable, and then dot add child spawn node. Following that, we need to go ahead and put it in the position. So we'll do spawn. Okay, so this is Bonk from the future. I actually unlisted the video and I'm re-uploading it to resolve this issue. The code that I wrote here where it says get tree dot root dot add child is actually incorrect. While doing the game jam this week and late last night, 
I ended up coming to a determination that in order to add objects to the, you don't want to add them to the root. You want to add them to the first child in the root. Um, law of trial and error, I figured out that when you change scenes, it will remove the first child of the root, but it won't remove the other ones. So if you add them directly to root, you will end up with objects that carry over from scene to scene. So on screen is the correct code for this. The rest of the tutorial should be as is. Just be aware of that when you write this and be safe. Thank you. Node global position equals spawn location dot global position and spawn node global rotation. It's important to not use rotation and position in this because that will be only its position and rotation as to its parent which will be not correct for the fact that the spawn node has a different parent than the spawner. Okay, and we're back. So we'll just go ahead and drag in that spawn location into the node 3D for spawn location and node to spawn. Notice there's not a little space there. You'll notice that the inspector will add spaces wherever there's a capitalized letter, so it's handy to allow for readability. And I'll just go ahead and build that again. And right there you see it says node to spawn now. Now if we go ahead and add no spawn node, so that's a packed scene. So that's essentially like a prefab in Unity. You're able to spawn those into the world. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And then if we play, we should be able to spawn those in. So if I left click, it just spawns a box all right and we can spawn as many as we want and they're in world space we go ahead and make sure that that works with the godot script as well so if we hit spawner right there for uh, node to spawn we need to reattach that and we can do that with godot script as well and everything just works next up add deletion which is also very simple save that and let's get back into the script so First, we're going to create a new variable. This one is going to be a little different in Godot script versus C sharp. So in Godot script, it's going to be a array variable. And in C sharp, it's going to be a list variable, specifically a list of node 3Ds. They're slightly different, but for the sake of this tutorial, they are interchangeable. So make sure that in the left click if statement, we are adding that node or appending that node to the array or list respectively. And then we call the input function is action pressed for mouse right click. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to loop through all of those nodes using a for each loop in C sharp and a for node in spawned nodes loop within Godot script. Don't know exactly what it's called. Then we're going to call on each of those nodes the queue free function. That's going to allow them to be deleted. And next, finally, we're going to make sure that we clean up those lists and arrays by using the clear function. All right, and we're back in Godot. So let's go ahead and hit play. And if we create objects, if we right click, they all just disappear. That's everything there is to spawning and deleting objects within Godot. And like I said, Godot 3 is much different. It's a little bit more complicated. And I'll go over why, but for now, if you just want to create objects in Godot 4 or delete them, that is how you do them. Now, so within Godot 3.5, this function right here would not actually work because it would fetch the root and it would add the child to spawn node, but it would not complete until the end of the frame. So what you would end up having to do is you could create a private void that would just be complete position. What you do is, is you'd copy this into here and you would make a parameter for node 3D. And then instead of doing it right there, you would call deferred. And all this does is it calls the method given at the end of the current tick or the end of the current frame. So all you have to do is pass it the spawn node. Basically what it does is it spawns the object, it adds it to the tree, but then it waits until the tree has completed adding. And this was required in Godot 3.5 or it would throw errors. So this works just fine in Godot 4 as well, but it is not uncommon. Now, that right there now works just fine in Godot 4. So that is a issue that has been resolved. And it is the same thing over here. You also have call deferred 
and you can add in a method in exactly the same way that you do in C sharp. I won't go over that, but if you did have to do this in 3.5, that's how you would do it in order to spawn and set the position and rotation of a node at the same time. Now, there's also one other note. In Unity, spawning objects, especially rapidly, is a big no-no. So in Unity, due to the way the scene structure exists, spawning objects like this in the process here is a bad idea as spawning and creating objects or creating and deleting objects within unity is one of the highest performance cost functions of any function whereas here in godot it's actually much higher performance when it comes to specifically instantiating objects even so much as, and if I find the tweet, I'll put it on screen here, the creator of Godot has actually gone on to say that creating and deleting objects using an object, never deleting objects, having 10 of these characters in the scene at any given time and just hiding them and then putting them to the location, he said it was completely unnecessary. So real quick, we're just going to put this in here and we're going to say, uh, so every single frame, we're going to spawn five nodes. And if we go in and hit play real quick, you can see that's a lot of nodes being spawned. And so far, there has been no dip in performance. That is not to say that there's not a performance cost. There is, and a memory cost. But it is just not enough for most people to worry about. So that is all for today's tutorial. So I'll be pushing this to GitHub. And I'm tempted to do something next week with raycasting. For now, Thank you all, and if you like everything that I've gone over, if you're still watching this video, thank you for taking an interest in the things I'm doing. Feel free to stick around, and have a wonderful day.